Erev Tov Chabrim, I'm Stephen Bernoun. You're watching Israeli News Live, getting very serious over in the Middle East and more threats between Russia and the United States. Now Russian MOD warns U.S.-led coalition not to strike the Syrian army, as we already see. What are they saying here? Uh, that Russia's defense ministry has cautioned the U.S.-led coalition of carrying out strikes on Syrian army positions, adding in Syria there are numerous S-300 and S-400 air defense systems up and running. Russia currently has S-400 and S-300 air defense systems deployed to protect its troop station in the TARDIS naval uh, supply base, but they are also letting the uh, U.S.-led coalition know that if you start target Damascus or anything like this, again, those air defense missiles will be turned on. Now, I cannot help but wonder, as I think about this, friends, uh, of one of the prophecies that I mentioned to you guys before here in Jeremiah chapter 49, uh, verses 23, 24, and on down here, but especially uh, down here, I believe it's, uh, let's see, let me, let me just back up real quick. Let's start with verse 23. Concerning Damascus, Hamath is confounded in Arpad, for they have heard evil tidings. They are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea, and it cannot be quiet. All right, and this tells us a couple of things. They have heard evil tidings. All right, they are faint-hearted. There is sorrow on the sea. It looks like there's going to be an exchange, especially with all the ships that are coming into the Mediterranean. Even more Russian ships are coming. U.S. ships are, are there already, and more, no doubt, will be coming. Uh, it's going to be a sorrow on the sea, and it cannot be quiet. It's going to escalate. I think the only way that the whole situation can be diffused, and I do remember, I think about Nineveh, as my wife mentioned this to me earlier today, Tell the people, remind them, God prophesied judgment on Nineveh, but when the people repented in sackcloth and in ashes and went back to the commandments of God, God spared Nineveh. He would do the same today. And some people might say, well, this is Russia. It's the evil empire. Remember, we're being fed a whirlwind of lies and propaganda by U.S. media. But the thing is, what the U.S. people should do is peacefully organize together and do demonstrations in the streets, holding up signs saying we need peace with Russia. And somebody wake up Donald Trump. Now he's even gone onto the campaign rhetoric saying that Russia broke the ceasefire agreement. Russia didn't break it. Did somebody forget that it was the United States that struck the Syrian army, what was it, three days into this, uh, into this uh, ceasefire? And unfortunately, the U.S. did not want to make public, but when it finally got leaked out about what the document was about, no one was to be flying during that time. Even in the secret recorded uh, conversation with Secretary of State John Kerry that was released in his meeting there in New York with other Syrian people there, he spoke about that Russia was agreeing to do a three-day no-fly zone, but a America wanted seven. Well, then why did they bomb the Syrian army within that seven days pl uh, place? Of course, it was claimed to be an accident, but there was not supposed to be no one flying. There was not supposed to be no attacks being done, but it was done nonetheless. So the prophecy says that the people will be faint-hearted concerning Damascus. There is sorrow on the sea. So Damascus is going to be the one that causes the problem. And of course they will. They've already talked about in some of the uh, reports from the U.S. the way they would strike. They're now considering it back on the books to take down Assad and Damascus using including cruise missiles from the ships in the sea. That could cause Russia to strike back at the ships that are in the sea. And then you're going to have a major interchange. Now watch what else it says. Verse 24, Damascus has waxed feeble and turned herself to flee and fear seized on her. Anguish and sorrows have taken her as a woman in travail. How is the city of praise not left the city of my joy? Remember Isaiah 17. She becomes a ruinous heap. Therefore her young men shall fall in her streets and the men of war shall be cut off in that day, saith the Lord of hosts. Now notice that the men of war shall be cut off in that day. That lets you know Jeremiah already knows that they're at war. There is already a war going on, but some kind of advanced system begins to hit the country and it cuts them off. And I will kindle a fire in the wall of Damascus and it shall consume the palaces of Ben-Hadad. All right. Now, let me quickly, there were some other things I wanted to share with you on this. 
Uh, also, if you look at Amos chapter 1, verse 2, and he said, The Lord will roar from Zion and utter his voice from Jerusalem, and the habitations of the shepherds shall mourn, and the top of Carmel shall wither. Now, I brought this out to you the other day. I do believe that this may be speaking of the two witnesses. When they begin to start their ministry, the shepherds mourn, lines up with Zechariah's prophecy. When they look upon him whom they pierce, and they will mourn, they separate each one to their own family. But then it talks about the transgressions of Damascus. And when you get to verse 5, I will break also the bars of Damascus and cut off the inhabitants from the plain of Avon. All right, and him that holdeth the scepter from the house of Eden and the people of Syria shall go into captivity unto Kerr. Kerr, by the way, is not a specific specific place. If you look at the Septuagint, it's like a walled area or, or pits. You know, it seems like they're going to be taken prisoner of war or perhaps even part of the refugees where they end up in Europe and they end up in camps there as well. It's very interesting to see how these prophecies play out. But let's get back to the breaking news. Now, this is what I look at when I think of the bars here. Let me see if I can't well, real quick while we're talking about this. Let's just take in uh, the uh, let's look at the S uh, uh, 300 uh, systems that, uh, that Russia has sent in into Syria there. And you'll see why I really cannot help but believe that this is what we're looking at here. When you look at this, all right, take a look at the image on your screen right now. What did the prophecy say over here? He says, I will break also the bar of Damascus, the bar of Damascus. And then we look at Russia's S-300 defense system. And if you remember right, when Ash Carter... And another, I forget, forget which general, the name of the general that sat with him at the Senate um, or congressional meeting here determining what they would have to do in order to be able to end this war in Syria. He said, in order to declare a no-fly zone, we would have to take out all of, all of Russia's air defense systems first and then fly continually. Even in that secret release document from John Kerry, he states the same to the Syrians. We would have to take out Russia's uh, missile defense system there. And they look like bars. If you just look at it like bars, they're surrounding and protecting Damascus. This is maybe the bars that it's speaking of. Can't say for sure, but I'm just saying it's kind of interesting to see that and to see how that would be likened to, like giant bars or something of that effect there. Anyway, going back to the, to this, to the news here. If you remember yesterday, we reported what InfoWars was saying here. U.S. Army chief threatens war with Russia. And that's Mark Miley warned last night the United States was ready to destroy its enemies and comments that were clearly directed to Russia. I want to be clear to those who wish to do us harm. Okay. Okay. Here's where you make your first state, General Miley. President Putin has been warning for over a year. He doesn't want war with, with NATO. He's not interested in a war. He's only asking for, for a respect to Russia's sovereignty. He's asking a respect for Russia's national interest as well. But, you know, it all kind of went down the drain because you have to remember, it was the British Empire controlled heavily by the Roman Catholic Church that was controlling this whole land here after it was conquered from the Turkish Empire and they were controlling the entire Middle East. That's another report altogether. I'm going to share with you where the British Empire, the British mandate, in fact, lays in biblical prophecy. We'll be going into that later tonight. Something's going to blow you away about that. But that's why there's such a major issue over Syria too, because the British were controlling what is considered to be Syria today, even Jordan and the modern day Israel, West Bank, Gaza, all these areas here. And they were the ones that divided up the land, but they were controlled by Rome and the prophecy is clearly laying there right in front of your face that the prophecy lays there and they divided the land for money. That's why the land kept getting redivided. The British mandate gave Israel a whole lot of land. Whoop, they changed it again. Now the United Nations says this. Now they say that. Now they say this. Every time they keep dividing it for gain, but we know who's in control now from prophecy and they don't want you to know that either. So anyway, it's one of the reasons why there's a big battle on for Syria too, because why? They did not want Syria going the way they did. It wasn't the intentions when they began to hand the land over for certain things to happen and go another direction. So it's a big problem. All right. But anyway, uh, General Miley, he goes on here to say here, we will stop you and we will beat you harder than you have ever been beaten before. Make no mistake about that. 
All right. He also says other countries, Russia, Iran, China, North Korea went to school on us. He said, adding they studied our doctrine, our tactics, our equipment, our organization, our training, our leadership. And in turn, they revised their own doctrines and they are rapidly mobilizing their military today to avoid our to to av uh, evolve our strengths and hopes in defeating us at the same time in the future. Now, they're not interested in wanting to defeat America. You know, if Russia wanted to go to a war with America when the collapse of the Soviet Union come, that would have been the time Russia would have done it. And you have to remember, Russia was a nuclear power then as well, and a big nuclear power, just like the United States was. But it, it was not, in fact, it's even at the collapse of the Soviet Union that there began to become a closer relationship with the United States and Russia. Did we forget that Russia was our ally in the Second World War? Did we forget that Russia was the one that helped free the Jews from the Holocaust? Did, did, did somehow we forget it? Now, I agree. I agree. Stalin, Mussolini, uh, Mussolini not a Russian, he's an Italian dictator, but, but Stalin, uh, Joseph Stalin, uh, and, 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 and the different dictators that were under the communistic uh, rulership were Jesuit-inspired. Joseph Stalin, you had Vladimir Lenin. They were both Jesuit-inspired leaders that turned the country into a communistic, atheistic society. Why? Rome wanted to destroy the Eastern Orthodox believers. And I don't say they got it right either. By no means do I say that. God sends two witnesses to straighten out this mess. They definitely don't have it right either. All right? But the point is, is, is for dominance, for a new world order. All right. So anyway, so he's threatening Russia. Make no mistake about it. We can now and we will retain the capability to rapidly deploy, he said. And we will destroy an enemy anywhere, anytime, he concluded. That's a direct threat. All right. Now, so what's Russia doing? Now Russia has put out their TU-95s and the TU-22Ms, according to the Sputnik News here, bombers to patrol airspace between Hawaii and Japan. They're not taking no chance. They're not taking no chance that, that America is going to strike from any angle. But, you know, it's not only that, guys. Let me tell you something else that's very serious that's going on right now as well over there. Uh, they're also letting us know Russia has got at least a decency to let the world know North Korea is advancing very rapidly to its own ICBM. And Russia believes they now have the capability to launch an ICBM. They've already been working on a three-stage rocket. It was very similar to the Russian one there. And that's what they're reporting here on Sputnik as well. Here is why North Korea's missile program is far more advanced than you think. And they go into detail in the article what, what North Korea has been doing. North Korea is getting ready to do their own launch of attack. Not to mention you got Pakistan, you got India, you got so many nuclear-powered states around the world. And it's just not, you know, friends, it's not going to end well for, the, for, for our own American people. You know, the thing is, here's what bothers me. Is the United States really insanely so jealous over Syria that they would put our own people at home at risk? I, like you guys, I have family in America, lots of family there. I don't want to see my family jeopardized all because the Obama administration is so bent on starting a nuclear war. What's it for? To hide the, hide the failing dollar? Do you know that Russia, in one of their own articles written in the Russian language, said that they believed that September, October, one or the other, they believed that we would end up in uh, a major war with the U.S. because Obama will do whatever he can to keep from the world knowing that the dollar has collapsed? Now, you guys already know this anyway. You know these type things are going on. Or what is it? They're afraid Donald Trump might get him, become a president and then he might make peace with Russia? You know, peace with Russia is not hard. We had it. Do you know how many Europeans here want peace with Russia? They don't want all this escalation of violence and all this moving massive amounts of troops over on the border. And then America turns around and they tell the people, the U.S., the Obama administration tells the people, well, we have to do it because Russia invaded Ukraine. Russia did not invade Ukraine. The United States toppled the legitimate government and the, and the president, Yanukovych, he has to call Russia to come and rescue him out of his own country because of a CIA-backed coup that was there to topple him. And why did the U.S. do that? Same thing for Syria. Bashar al-Assad wouldn't go along with the New World Order, so they decide to topple him. 
or trying to. They haven't done it as of yet. They'll get, they may be successful, though. And Russia could have stepped in and stopped the coup early on, but he didn't. But when it comes to Crimea, Russia wasn't going to allow Crimea to fall into the hands of the West, seeing that's where his naval base was. So he took steps. Russia knew that in 1991, the Crimean people did a referendum to be independent from Ukraine. Why? Because Crimea had already been for 200 years part of Russia. They had a right of their own autonomy. But no, the United States wants to force Crimea as part of Ukraine as well. Now, even, even uh, here in the Czech Republic, President Zeman believes that it was annexed. He doesn't believe that it was done properly either. And he's a very strong backer of President Putin. Maybe he's right. Maybe it was annexed. Nonetheless, the people there seem to be very content with it because they are all Russians to begin with, hold Russian passports. Many of them have been holding Russian passports for about 10 years now. So they were inching that way early on anyhow, wanting to go back as part of Russia. I don't know. I, I, I can't say everything. But the thing is, guys, what's going on is we are in a serious situation headed to a nuclear exchange with Russia. And the reason I say a nuclear exchange is because Russia already knows. Putin has said it many times. If we can't win conventionally, I will have to resort to a nuclear exchange.